Hey kiddos, it's time for another week with the word. Got some great stuff to tell you this week. We, um, wow, we just went through a heck of a shaking here with the hurricane coming up and stuff. We had Hurricane Irene come through and then we had the remnants of Hurricane Lee. And uh, God just really began to shake this nation from the northeast. We had a tornado come through as well. Uh, shortly before that we had an earthquake hit D.C. and we felt some of the... Uh, the remnants up here in New York and so I believe that God is really awakening in this hour and he'd really put upon my heart a vision that he'd given me a long time ago and it was simply this it had to do with the shakings that were coming the Lord really started to speak to me quite a lot of, out of the book of Isaiah and out of the book of Jeremiah and how his people had kind of fallen into a place of complacency they'd fallen into sin they'd erred they'd strayed from the mark and God's word began to come again and start to speak to their hearts and let them know where they were. And rather than allowing that word to constrain them and begin to cause them to come into a place of repentance, they actually hardened their heart and turned against the Lord. And so then God sent a greater dealing to begin to move them to a place of repentance. You know, and the word of God says that, you know, in that hour when his word comes, don't turn away and don't allow your heart to be hard. Because if you do, God will give you what you desire, the desire to turn away from Him. And in turning away from Him, you actually turn into the darkness. And then through that place, that's where we find in Luke 15, that the prodigal son turns away not knowing what he had and what was offered to him. And he goes off into a place of exile, in all honesty. What looked like increase and blessing and release was really a place of captivity and a place of burden. And as God continued to deal with that man's heart and remove stop after stop after stop until he finds himself laying in the pigsty, eating the pods of the pigs, that's when he comes to himself and he realizes, like, i got to get out of here. Like, this isn't my inheritance. This isn't my destiny to be bound in this captivity as a slave for a foreigner. My identity is a son of God. And I need to return to the house of the Lord even if... He'll cause me to be a servant because, wow, he treats his servants so well. How could I go wrong in that, you know? And so, man, that's what got me here. But praise the Lord, dude, you know? And then, then we come to find that the sun's coming in that place, and he's coming up over the crest of the hill, and he's expecting to have to grovel before his father. But no, his father breaks out in love towards him, runs, throws himself around his neck, weeps, cries, kisses him, and welcomes him into the household, into the fold. And he puts not only a prized robe over him, but then he also gives him a ring and he sets sandals upon his feet, you know. And I, I think back and I look and I say, man, that man must have stunk. He'd just been laying in the bed of pigs for weeks on end. He probably looked disheveled. It said that he went, you know, on a long journey to return to his father's house. And, uh, man, he must have been raggedy looking, you know, not having eaten and stuff, and probably very destitute, dry lips, cracked face, you know, from the, the effects of the sun and the lack of water probably and food and proper hygiene. And this father just throws himself on top of this son and just loves him and just caresses him and just begins to embrace him, man. And so that's, that's a, it's a powerful story there, you know. And God's grace and mercy is such, you know, and that's... that's that's his love, man. That's the love in his hand, you know. But did, did he keep the son from going? No, he didn't. You know, it actually says that he, from that moment, began to divide the inheritance. You know, and so I look at that and I say, wow, like, as a wealthy businessman, must he have sold properties to gather the full inheritance rights? To give in, like, a cash deposit to that son, you know? Did he sell some of his flock? Did he maybe, you know, had to, had to downsize? sell portions of stock off to get the value in. You know, so I'm looking at not a man who grumblingly did this, but a man that willingly said, okay, and then began to set forward what was needed to ultimately correct this young man's destiny. And in the correction, he actually allowed him to go into the place of bondage and captivity. And um, man, you know, if God has showed us time and time again through Isaiah, through Jeremiah, through Israel, when they were in Egypt and Moses was raised up to lead them out, you know, if God's dealings with the church and dealings with his body have been the same, and then Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish any of that. I came to confirm all of that is true, and then give you one step further and say, 
not only that, but love God and love others. And in doing that, you'll sum up all of this. So all of this has been brought to you to a place, Paul says in Galatians, you know, while you're going through all this, that's like a tutor to get you into the place of love, to get you into the place of grace, to have the full understanding and knowledge, the revelation of God. And so I continue to pray for you that you would get the understanding, you would get the knowledge. You see through different books that Paul writes, he continually is going back and forth and encouraging the church and saying, I have not ceased to pray for you since the moment this first started. And I continue to pray that you would come into the fullness, you would come into maturity as sons and daughters of the living God. You know, and so Peter gives us a little insight in that book as well about what maturity looks like and sacrifice. And then James goes on and he talks about, you know, sometimes we get into difficult situations. Sometimes we get into a place of pressing and we don't know how to deal with it. And so the, the vision that the Lord gave me was basically this. He said, you know, there's shakings that are coming in the earth. Shakings are coming. Shakings are here. This was years ago, probably 2008 or before, the Lord spoke to me and he, he said to me, he said, shakings are coming. So I said, okay. You know, I mean, often with me, God, break, he just kind of breaks in and just speaks to me and stuff, you know. And So forgive me for my boldness if I've offended you in the past where I just break in and I just say something to you. But God just breaks in and says things to me, you know. And so I, by the grace of God, have tuned my ear now to hear and say like, Okay, well, what does that mean for me? You know what I mean? If you're, if you're coming to me, just bust in. But I mean, wouldn't a friend just drop by and be like, Oh, yo, I'm going to the movies. Or, hey, you want a slice of pie? You know, you want a piece of pizza? And it's like, yeah, okay, cool. So, you know, pizza's coming. So what now? You know what I mean? It's like, well, you know, we could either pay cash or card. It's like, well, what are the options? You know, what are benefits of both? You know, and so he says to me, he says, Shakings are coming. I say, okay, cool, shakings are coming. Like... What does that mean? And he's like, well, and he brings me to the scripture, you know, and he quotes the scripture. It says, you know, once again, I will shake all things that can be shaken, you know, and I will cause my voice to be heard again in the earth. I'll do what I need to do. And um, so I'm like, okay, cool. So what does that have to do with me, you know? And so then God kind of breaks out and says, well, the shakings are coming. You can either embrace them now or embrace them later. And I said, okay, well, what's the benefits of both? You know, and he's like, well, if you embrace them now, you'll probably encounter about a tenth of it. But more importantly, you'll have the ability, the wisdom, the tact, the intellect, the understanding to begin to share with other people what you learned from embracing the shakings first. And I said, oh. And he said, and then my blessing on top of that, because this is my will for you. It's like, okay, and what if? And he's like, well, if you choose to do it the other way, then the shakings are going to come. They're going to be severe. They're going to cause you to come into right alignment. And through great loss, there shall be great gain. I said, okay, cool. And I said, well, dude, you're telling me shakings are going to come. You're telling me I'll only encounter a percentage of those shakings now. And more importantly, I'll be able to lead my brothers and sisters in Christ through this time because of the wisdom you've given me in my own personal life. Like, that sounds good to me, dude. I'm in. You know what I mean? And so while many other people were enjoying a time of prosperity and love and blessing, I was really going through the ringer and just being sent places I didn't want to go going through financial situations I didn't want to go through. I mean, just incredibly intense stuff, but now looking at it through the, the eyes of Christ and seeing the level of shaking that's coming even now, and I, and I believe we're just beginning to step into. You know, and already we've seen, you know, um, what is it, uh, the FEMA uh, relief, seeing... Uh, Areas of disaster that have been proclaimed all over the, the earth. I mean, we got wildfires in Texas that are just consuming with no end. We just had a, a power outage in uh, lower Los Angeles and Arizona and uh, New Mexico, I believe. Uh, 1.4 million people were affected. The power was just out. And so there was massive gridlock. Nobody was able to move because there was no lights. And then since there's no common love or brotherly love, it's not, well, I'll let you go, you let me go. It's like, well, my light's green and your light's red, so then you sit there and wait while I go. 
And I mean, that's the way of the world, you know, but that is the kind of thing that needs to be exposed in your heart. And that's why God is willing to do this. You know, so I just want to cover some scriptures with you and stuff that just in the last few days, the Lord has brought me into. Uh, one of them is, is Amos. Well, actually, first off, let's start here with uh, Matthew 11, 6. And Jesus says, it's a story of John. And Jesus says, blessed are those who are not offended because of me. Blessed are those that do not fall away on my account. Blessed are those who do not take up a personal offense against me in what I say. And so you, you've got to take that in perspective and look at that and say, okay, here's John. He's had an award-winning ministry. He's led many to Christ, you know, believers. He's baptized, repentant, so on and so forth. And now here he is. He's in a tight spot. He's in a bind. He's in jail, okay? And now, if this is the Messiah, this is the chosen one, surely, as your prized servant, you'll set me free. You know? And so John's sending messengers to him, you know, are you the one or should I look for another? And Jesus simply says to him, he says, tell them what you see here. The blind receive sight, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the cripples walk, and the poor preach good news. Oh, and give them this caveat too. Blessed are those who are not offended because of me. Blessed are those who don't fall away. Because Jesus must have known in his heart what a tough word that was going to be returning to John. Because John being a, 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 a student of the scriptures would know. Okay, that's Isaiah. That's the book of Isaiah. That's, that's the very word that I came to proclaim about the Messiah that was coming. And then he'd encounter the, the transfiguration when the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he knew like... This is the dude. He knew the witness, the inner witness of his spirit. You know, because that's how he lived his life. That's how he led his ministry. was through that inner witness of the cross in his own life that Jesus had came, you know, and he was the one. And so then he sends that back to him. So I, I want to talk to you about a right attitude, a right heart attitude in the shakings, you know. And then it goes on in Amos 3.6. It talks about, you know, if the trumpet's blown in the city... Aren't people afraid? Like when that trumpet call comes, there'll be great fear in the earth, you know. And then the Lord says, if there's calamity in this city, am I not the one who designed it? Am I not the one who sent it? You know, and, and so I just want to challenge a lot of the Christians out there that are saying like, oh, the judgment's done and this and that. No, the judgment's yet to come. The final judgment, that day we stand before the Lord and we testify and atone for the sins. You know, we take ownership for our lives and he walks through point by point and says I gave you my grace here what did you do with it I gave you my love here what did you have to say you know and so I, I want to clarify judgment and I want to call it the dealings of God in the hearts of men what God is doing in the earth right now is he's dealing with the hearts of men he's rightly aligning he's causing righteousness and justice to be set forth again as the forefront and as the standard of his throne. He's beginning to expose wickedness, injustice. But he also says in his word that it begins in the house of God first. So beloved, if you're sitting there and you're saying, man, God has been doing this or God has been doing that. <coughs> you may be coming from the other angle and praying against Satan that he would not do these kind of things in your life. I challenge you to begin to look at your foundations and say, is this possibly the work of God. And from that place, when you begin to ask your father on his throne and say, is this you, Dad? You know, and he begins to reveal to you, like, yes, it is. I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to let you know that your foundations aren't as sure as you thought they were, that you're built on sand. You know, and so, gosh, that's a hard word. But I would rather have that word come to me now, in this life, than when I pass through that wall of fire and my works are tested and tried, that they're burnt. And then I feel that great loss. And though yet being saved, I make it through. But I feel that loss of everything I built in this life. Everything I thought I constructed on stone, I built on sand. And I challenge you today, friend, to say that word is a better word to receive in this life than the next. In Jesus' name.